wrong way, poof, you're done. Okay. But do you realize as Seventh-day Adventists you should have the most assurance of any denomination of Christians out there because you have a better and a fuller understanding of what Christ has done for you and is doing for you in the heavenly sanctuary? Amen. Why does he say the works were completed before the foundation of the world? This work is the work of salvation. Isn't that what you're supposed to rest in? Yeah. You're called to rest in Christ? Do you understand that the works were completed before the foundation of the world? Meaning that your salvation was done and complete before there was ever a sinner? Amen. That in Christ, who in the book of Revelation is seen as the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world? Amen. Do you have assurance? Your assurance was set before you were even born. Amen. Before your parents, 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 parents were born. Amen. Do you have salvation? Do you have assurance? If you're in Christ, you better believe you do. Before the foundation of the world. This is why you can never work your way to be saved. This is why when people say, well, you're trying to work your way into heaven, you can say, listen, I don't have to work at all because my salvation has been secured before the foundation of the world. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, Amen. verses 3, 4, go to 5, and look at 6 too, all the way to 8, and keep going on. Do you have assurance in Christ there is nothing that can take you out of God's hand? For we who have believed you enter that rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place on the seventh day in this way, God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this place they shall not enter my rest. So listen, why does he keep quoting Psalm 95, saying, they shall not enter my rest? He talks about the rest, then he keeps bringing you back to those who didn't enter the rest. Talks about the rest, then keeps bringing you back to those who didn't enter the rest. Because he's wanting you to see that it is through faith in Christ that you're only able to enter his true rest. And the Sabbath is a symbol of this rest. Amen. And when you keep the Sabbath, you show the world the completeness of the rest that you have found in Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't keep it to work your way to make God like you better. You keep it because Christ is your all in all. Yes. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. What did he do? He washed it, he washed it white as snow. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, that is the gospel. Amen. That is what New Testament Christianity is all about. And the Sabbath is right there. Amen. Not as a means of salvation. But it is a proof of salvation. Yes. That because of what God has done, I can rest fully and completely in Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Gary? The Sabbath is our seal. <coughs> Say what? The Sabbath is our seal. Sabbath is a seal of what God <coughs> has done in His completed work. Just as He rested on... Here's something else. This was brought out very shortly. Just as God rested on the seventh day because all his works were complete, right? Mary Jane brought this up. What day did Christ die? Friday. And that's which day? Friday. Now, what do we call Friday? Preparation. Not preparation day, but good, good Friday, right? The, the day that Christ died, the church calls that Good Friday. Why is it Good Friday? Because Christ died that day for our sin, right? Now, that was Good Friday. God saw that what He did on the sixth day, everything was complete. And behold, it was not just good, but it was very good. And God rested from all His works on the seventh day. Christ died on a Friday. What did He do? on the next day, which was the seventh day. Yes. Why did Christ have to rest in that tomb? Because His salvation was complete and there was nothing more to be added. You hear me 
you say that? That's for your benefit. There is nothing you can add to your salvation. It is complete. It is done. You can only find it in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, you guys need to know this and you need to be able to explain it. Because unless you only hang out with Adventists, those people that keep Sunday are wondering about you. And they're wondering about why you keep this day. And they're wondering if you're legalists. And uh, they have good reason to wonder. Because sometimes that's how we come across. Because we have tied the Sabbath with the law instead of tying it to grace. And the Sabbath needs to be tied to grace and not the law. We are not saved by the law, nor are we under the law. Did you hear me? I'm a pastor. I said that. You are not under the law. You are under grace. Amen. Now I say that, and let me clarify. You are not under the law as a means of salvation. But as a standard of living, is the law uh, a part of your life? Yeah. In your heart. Is it wrong to steal? Yes. How do you know that? Because that's what the law says, right? Is it wrong to lie? Yes. As a Christian, is it good to be a Christian and to cheat on your spouse? No. Is it good to covet? No. Okay, so as a standard of living, the law does have its place in your life. But as a means of salvation, you'll never work your way into a right standing with God that has been done and completed in Christ. But now that I'm in Christ, He's given me a new nature. And because I have this new nature, I can live a righteous life in Christ. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so let's continue on. Chapter 4. We did verse 5. And again in this place they shall not enter my rest. Verse 6. Since therefore it remains that some... That word must, if you're reading from the King James, New King James, is it a Yes. That means it's a supplied word. Okay. So, again, since therefore it remains that some enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter it because of disobedience, again he designates a certain day, saying in David, what? Today. Today, after such a long time as it has been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Verse 8, now this is interesting. Who's the name that's there in verse 8? Joshua. Okay, now, it's either going to be Joshua or it's going to be Jesus, depending on your translation. <coughs> what word do you have? Mine says Joshua, but it's now let me ask you, should it be Jesus? Or should it actually be Joshua? See, because Joshua is actually a better uh, translation for that word. Jesus was the Greek translation. Because let me ask you a question. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards spoken of another day. If it was Jesus, Jesus would have gave them rest, right? Right. Think about this. You're still talking about the Exodus and bringing them into the Promised Land. That generation died because of unbelief. Who brought the next generation into the promised land? Jesus or? It was Joshua. Did Joshua give them this rest? No. No, because they didn't find it either because they had the same sins as their parents. A sin of unbelief. So Joshua is the word that actually needs to be uh, there, translated. Okay, because it talks when Joshua brought them into the promised land, they still didn't find God's rest because they still had a heart of unbelief. They never entered the true meaning of the Sabbath rest, the completeness in Christ. Did they not keep going from obedience to disobedience, from obedience to disobedience? And even in their obedience, sometimes you had to question whether it was real or not. God said to this people, they draw close to me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. And brothers and sisters, this is the warning that Paul has given to Christians today. We may draw close to him with our lips, but where is our heart at? Salvation is in Christ alone, it's through his merits alone. And it is his righteousness that he gives to us, not that we share together. We take his righteousness that we do not deserve. And he took our unrighteousness that he did not deserve. Amen. And he gave us his life. Amen. And by his stripes, what? 
For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward have spoken of another day. So verse 9 says what? There remains, therefore, rest. Now you look in the original Greek, because this is New Testament, that word rest. And do you know what that word is? Sabbath. Sabbatismo, which is Sabbath. So there still remains a Sabbath for those who what? For the people of God. So listen. So there remains, therefore, a Sabbath for the people of God. Now, this rest, even if you don't go back to the original, it still says the word rest, which he ties into the seventh day. Is that right? Which he tied into creation week. Is that right? Is there any other day that's spoken of except the seventh day that you can come to the conclusion of from these verses? Okay? It's very easy to see. It's talking about the Sabbath. So again, as New Testament Christians, when people ask you why you keep the Sabbath, show me biblically, this is where you take them. And you explain these to them, and then you ask them why you're not. Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Why, well, yes. Has Jesus paid the debt for your sins? Why, well, yes. Have you entered into His rest? Yes. Yes. Then why are you not obeying what the Word says? And then leave it up to them. Because it's not you who convicts people, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you're God's messengers. Is that not right, Brad? Right? So, do you see the gospel in Sabbath keeping? Yes. Do you see that this is biblical? And you have a firm foundation for your belief. And that this foundation is just as sure as Jesus himself. Verse 9, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest, do you love this? Verse 10, for he who has entered his, is that word his capitalized? Yes. Mm -hmm. So for he who has entered God's rest has himself, that word himself, is that capitalized? No. So that's talking about you and I. Okay? When we enter God's true rest, we cease from what? Our own works. What kind of works are they talking about here? These are works of righteousness. The Jews were going back to the temple services. They were trying to find salvation in ritual, in works, instead of in Christ. When we, who have no idea what it's like to even deal with the temple services, we look and say, have we entered that rest? Do we truly trust Christ in every aspect of our life? Or is there still a small portion of part that we're holding back from Him? Because Jesus doesn't want 99.9% .9 of your heart. It's either 100% or it's nothing. You guys understand that? If Jesus paid it all, then you have to believe it all. And you have to give Him your for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his listen are you fretting today because you think that God looks at you with judgmental eyes are you worried that God will not accept you because you know you? And how can God ever love you? <clears throat> Do you wonder if God, because you've made so many mistakes, if He will continue to forgive you for those mistakes? Listen, what this is telling you, that you cease from your works and you rest fully and completely in Him. Let me ask you a question. If you were out on the street and you got run over by a car and both of your legs were broken and you could not move, could you get yourself to the hospital? No. Would you not be dependent on the help of a stranger 
to anybody that's around you? Yes. Right? That's the same illustration about how you should feel about your God. Have you messed up? Do you wonder if God looks at you through judgmental eyes? You are that person laying on the road with two broken legs and there's nothing you can do. And it's Jesus Christ who comes along and He picks you up, but He carries you. And He takes you and He dresses your wounds. And He comforts you and He restores you and He places you back to a position and standing as if you have never fallen or gotten hurt before. That's the rest that we have in Christ. That's why it's complete. And that's why there is nothing you can do except believe. Believe and submit. Daily, hourly, sometimes by the minutes. But it is all about submission to Christ. Amen? Amen. Did you see the gospel in this message today? Amen. Do you see the gospel and the Sabbath and how they're linked? Do you have a better understanding why the Sabbath in the last days will be an issue for the entire world? It's not about the law. It is about Christ. Amen. And whether you will fully and completely surrender to Him or whether you won't. Whether you accept the seal of God or whether you accept the mark of the beast. It's all about the gospel. <laughs> Closing hymn this morning is hymn number 152.
Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this wonderful message. And we want to thank you for the fact that, you know, when you put the crowning act up on creation, you made woman. That was the final thing that you did. And, and, and what we were asked to do was to rest. And the beautiful thing is if we read Gen uh, Genesis 2, 2 and 3 there, we see that you lived that beautiful Sabbath day with us. And then you said, this is blessed and this is sanctified. So you made a memorial of creation. You signed your handiwork with your seal. And you said that every Sabbath you would meet with us. And you would come to us. No matter where we are, this isn't something we have to come to. This is something that comes to us. Amen. And we are so thankful that you are our God and that you created and did everything that needs to be done. Amen. And we just want to live in that rest. We want to celebrate that rest every single Sabbath day. And we want to preach it and teach it as John and this message. And the fact that this isn't an Adventist message. It's not just a Seventh-day Baptist message. This message has a very very deep meaning for the end. Amen. And Amen. people need to wake up and realize. And Lord, I pray that you will lighten this earth with the glory of yourself through your people, us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.